it's evolving a lot and that's only good for the for the game for the development of the players in the league um that that teams further down the pyramid are able to access really good resources around analysis i try to affect the outcome of a football match i probably don't as much but to 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 have that option and to try and to to show that at half time or, or in game but the other one i think this is the one that i really come uh, it, it's natural to, to me, and it happens more, is the reflection and the review of the game. How can we get better? How can we assure that we keep at it? My name is Ian Birchnell. I'm the head coach at Notts County Football Club. I'm João Alves and I'm first team tactical analyst at Notts County Football Club. The importance of having an analyst in the in the coaching staff is is huge. I think not only just to look at the the games back, but also reflect on the training. Also having somebody that sits in the stand that's kind of understands what I want and what I want to look for every game, every training, and then be the connection between that material and the players. So when João understands how I see the game and how I would want my team to set up, it makes it much easier for him to be able to operate, to see key things, to see uh, common trends in what we're doing. Every day we kind of discuss previous games, upcoming opponents, how we can connect how we're playing to the, the next match, and then how we're going to be able to deliver that in training. So I talked with Zhao about the training and what training we're going to do, then he can look for certain key things in that training, clip them, send them to the players, just to give continual feedback to the players so that it doesn't just stop when training finishes, but it carries on after that. As Gaffer said, it's, it's important to, to know what he's looking at. And um, if I don't have that, it's very, very hard to actually um, show him what he wants. Uh, but the goal is to look at the game kind of through his eyes a little bit. That's why the connection is important and why it's important to know exactly what we're after because then I can just go and look for it and take a bit of, of load off of, of Gaffer's plate and uh, deliver it to the players a bit. We're always in touch. We're always quite clear on what, what we're after and what's good behaviour, what's behaviour that we want to improve. So I would just say it's a good, healthy relationship with uh, a lot of clarity. For me to do my job, very important. And for, for Ian to get the best out of me, for sure as well. If you can watch things as a team and as individual with certain coaches and what things that you're working on, it's a massive advantage. I mean, Zhao, I've just been speaking with him then, he always sends me clips of certain strikers who sort of similar or we want that sort of movement and things and the gaffers sent me videos as well on the B Pro, certain strikers, what he wants. At previous clubs, um, we've not had that. You, you're either having to go or ask to watch this, whereas sort of Zhao, we've got a good relationship every player has with him. Um, he'll know what, what to send across or what we we're working on to improve to add into that area. Um, but everyone gets along great with Zhao, so it's easy to go across from him and say, look, can you help me with this? Or can you add this into the clips? You'd obviously pull him on what you would need. So some lads might only want a snippet of it. The best bit of analysis that will get them to the performance they need for that weekend, someone might want extensive. I want to know every single thing about X, Y, Z, about this player. So it varies very personally, I think, when you get with Zhao on how and what you want from it. And because the programmes are so good now behind it, he can tailor it for you and in the individual to improve. Without seeing what you're doing, you don't know how you're going to progress. You don't know what to progress in. And with them being able to analyze it with you and give it a detailed reaction of what you're analyzing. I'm learning stuff at 30, which I'm happy about. If I'm going to stay ahead of youngsters coming to the team, ahead of everyone else, I need to know that I've got these tools available to use. I came into first team football about eight or nine years ago now, and the technology has really evolved since then. Monday night football 
graphics that were there a few years ago that are starting to become much easier and much more accessible at probably a lower cost. So you can make the visual aids for the players so much stronger. We all analyze the game, even years and years ago before this sort of technology, the old school recorder and fast forward and rewind was there. Everybody was looking into the game to try and get a margin, but I think it's become more accessible quicker with the feedback loops, you know, with filming the games live yeah. at half time. One of the most important things is like, Zhao can come down and give me instant feedback quick. Maybe there's three or four common trends that Zhao's picked out um, using the B-Pro cameras and he can come down and we can review that in depth and then go and deliver that back to the players at half time. I think that's a great asset to have. We can have the same on the training ground because we're filming it. So I just think that it, it massively is kind of sped up and give more depth to the coaching process. I, I second all of that, so in terms of technology for sure, and then the knowledge actually, I think, increased in the past, what, 10 years, and there's a lot more people and a lot more knowledge available. So I think that's improved analysis to a good extent, and then it's improved players' experience as well because we're giving them a platform to, this is what you do specifically to have a good game and I think that clarity as well has improved. It's been a massive change because you have to become more of an intelligent footballer with the amount of that can be analysed on the pitch, training pitch to the games. You now have to really go into depth and start using your brain more. And that opens up a whole different level of progression in football. So you, you're not just being told it anymore. You're being shown it in five different ways. So it's then, are you capable of moving with the times for myself staying with it or are you going to fall behind and the younger lad's going to take over so I had to take my own readings off it mentally pictures as I was growing up because it was so much harder to recollect from taking information from training or, or games because it just wasn't advanced enough at the time. Years ago I went into clubs and they were needing three four five analysts and they were we probably getting that kind of quality of work with less personnel now, which means that you can go further down the leagues with maybe less finances behind you, but still get good quality analysis done. On a weekly basis, some of the, we have big group meetings, obviously with reflections of last game and then opposition analysis for upcoming games. So they're normal, but on top of that, we probably, we have small group meetings. So unit meetings, defense, midfield attack. But then on a daily basis, we'll, we'll myself and Zhao, the analyst will look at training. We'll go back through the training sessions. We'll maybe clip bits of that to be able to, to send or, or show players the next day and also use it in one-to-one -one meetings, both myself and the other coaching staff on board will also be active in terms of clipping certain players, positions, roles, responsibilities, just to try to break the game down and give as much feedback as possible to the players. So they're not coming in and the only coaching they get is on the pitch. There's a lot of information that they get in and around the, the actual training itself. Probably overall, we use more time than we did before, but that's because we've now got the training ground cameras, which we didn't have last season. So we introduced them, which are obviously increases the workload for, for myself and the, the analysts, but it does give us much better feedback loops for the players. So I, th I would say our overall time, we're probably using a bit more than we did last season on analysis, but the quality of the analysis that we can do in the shorter time is much higher. It's a cycle. So I do post-match after a game. So we go day to day. So we'll go before the session, we'll get together, we'll look at whatever happened in the game and what we want to push uh, to the players as a group, then what we want to push to the players individually. I'll then go to the training grounds. I'll have a look at what's being done. I found it very helpful to to know exactly what's being done in a in a training session because that blends in with what we're trying to do as analysts. I'll get the, the the recordings done. Then we'll come back. We'll review training uh, whenever there's there's uh, interesting. Uh, tactical behaviors and then I'll start then looking at opposition analysis and pushing out bits with individual players and it, again it's a cycle it's a uh, constant feedback and it just goes we've done this if we've done well why was it that we've done it well so we try to give them that platform that base of this is why it's good so then it becomes clear as a behavior what we want 
And then same with when it's bad. If it's bad, why is it bad? So if the game starts to stretch, what's causing that to stretch? How can we correct it? If the game's nice and compact and, and we keep it as we want it, then what's the reasons for that and what's impacted their structure um, and what's given us success? Depending on, uh, on on what we decide, we put uh, some content together for the players before the, the match, so hour 45 before. That's when we announce the lineups. So we'll have that on my laptop ready to, to put in front of the players. Then it's a bit of a waiting game until lineups are announced. Then it gets a bit frantic with trying to understand what the opposition are doing, where we, we can start to kind of predict and assess where we're going to get joy, where we're going to get troubles. I'll put it on, up on the board so the players know. I'll give them a bit of information in between. Uh, so the individual bits that maybe didn't filter through to the, the group meeting, I can just go through. Uh, sometimes good practice is to just give an example of a clip they've done in training or a clip from an elite player. And then from there, I'll go up to the gantry. I've got the radio, so I can just radio down anything I see. The guys can radio up anything that they're particularly interested in. I can just clip it straight away, but particularly at half time, we bring it down uh, and see what, what um, I give them a better, clearer picture of what's going on. It's tricky to see it at um, pitch level. Then we'll go into the changing room. The gaffer will speak about um, the key messages that he wants to send. Then again, we'll have an opportunity to put in some smaller bits in front of the players with a picture, which is great. I think that gives us actually a lot of buy-in. I've found when we don't have video that the message can get lost. The ability to look at half time with the, with the quality of the camera that it gives you and the immediate feedback that it gives you, I think is really important because as a coach, you, you have a small window at half time where you can make those changes um, and be proactive and really get messages across. When the players are out on the pitch, it's so hard to get quality of message across. We have the cameras, the wide lens vantage point, being able to clip things. By the time I'm in at half time, you know, you're pressed for those minutes. So as much feedback as I can get at that half time is huge. And when you have that 15 minutes, you've got to use it really well. And I think BPRO certainly gives us the feedback to allow us to be more efficient at half time. I try to affect the outcome of a football match probably don't as much, but to, to, to have that option and to try and to, to show that at half time or, or in game. Uh, but the other one, I think this is the one that I really come, uh, it, it's natural to, to me and it happens more, is um, the, the, the reflection and the review of the game. So our post-match, why have we had success? Why were we unsuccessful? Uh, what were the factors? How can we get better? How can we assure that we keep at it? Myself and the staff tend to watch the games back anyway, um, of course, the, the next day. But then when we come in on the Monday morning, Jao will have, will have clipped it for us. And, and the more we've worked together, the more he knows what sort of things I'd want to look for. And then he will present to, to me what he's seen. So breakdown of what we do in possession, out of possession, any other trends within the game or problems that we might have had. And then that could be 20 minutes, half an hour, but then we'll, we'll clip that down to a, a more manageable amount for the players. For me, stop. This, this is no brainer. Here, yeah. here, and we just come out and all the space is on this side, but we've played three, four passes all on the same side. And then we end up doing this one. Just what you're talking about body position that I heard. Yeah. He's, yeah, his body shape is just to yeah. go, look, he just needs to, he needs to turn, open yeah. up, play there, come out. Yeah. But then we just do that. Yeah. Do you want this? I can clip it. Yeah, I it. think so. Because I know it's on half time, but we can control yeah. this moment. There's still two minutes left of this half. Uh, Maybe we'll end up showing the, the players up to 10 clips, but we'll try and find a common theme and we'll try and link it to the next game so that it is um, yeah, consistent with the messages that we want to put on the training pitch. What do we think to this? Build up. Where's the ball got to go? Out left all day. I think that first pass Connell is too soft. 
I think you can wrap that back to, to Sam so he can take back foot and get out. But even so, I still think back foot, this is the pass here. We have to trust that we can play this pass and then we get out, look at the space Chicks has got and then Connor will run them off. If we keep playing same side and clip long, I don't think it's to our advantage. And now look, Vinny's dropped, Cal's a little high and then maybe we don't land on it well enough in here. Daryl can put on a very good and um, simple, I know it's, I say simple, but it's very extensive what he does. But for us lads, it's made simple. And that allows you to process the complexity of what they're trying to do, the new sort of distances to lines, to areas you're trying to cover and protect. And it's something where if you were saying it, they might not process it much, but how you're able to analyze it and put it in, it's like, it's quite simple. I think that's a great position, Chicks. Just if you stop there, how we double pivot now, we've got 2v1, so Chicks, you can come up here. Instead of three versus one, come up and join the, where's Chicks? Yeah. yeah. That's perfect position. You see how the U2 have just got that, everything locked out in front now. With the training ground footage, what we tend to do um, is after the session, we'll just use that as a, another reflection. So we'll have the session objectives and we'll have objectives for, for all the, the drills. All the drills will have tactical components and we'll just like verify that those behaviours are being met. And if they aren't, it's, it's easy to just go there and identify why and start to push it out. Also, I should say, we, we push it out a lot when when the behaviours are good, because we feel that actually it's worked quite well for us when we see something good, we praise it, and then it starts to happen more and more. I always like to film trainings because I like to watch back what we're doing, because you get so involved with the training. I think being able to be more reflective on your own practice is massive. I think it d depends on, on the training that we do. Like today, when we've had the bigger area stuff, there might be some really good clips of some of the movements that we've discussed. We might just think about one or two players and key roles and after the training, we can just we can just put it on the TV, we sit down, we flick through the training and, and if we see some patterns or movements or things that we thought were a problem in the session, we can clip them. Either we send them to the players with some notes on them or, or we maybe we catch them in the morning, sit down for five minutes, go back through their training from the day before. But it's a good process for me as a coach because I get to see if what I was coaching is correct, if the things that I think I was trying to work on in the training session happened, um, and you get to be a bit more reflective on that. And I think it also gives the players, sometimes the players are just in the session, it gives them a chance after the session to sit down and really look at what they did. Too much distance that isn't covered. So that means that this pass needs to be bigger. And as the pass is bigger, it means that it's harder to land on things if we don't occupy the centre of the pitch. Uh, so what we need again is just to vacate, occupy all the time. Yeah, that's what Gaffer's saying there. There was a moment today that it, we've had our centre mid making a run, which means that structurally we're going to create a gap there. So what we need to do is to arrive back into that gap so that we're more secure behind the ball, so that we can land on second balls and keep going, uh, so that we can take space that's just been vacated and and should be there to be taken. Uh, and as I saw that with B Pro, I could literally just get my phone up, see it go five seconds back, look at the at the at my phone, see the picture, confirm it because at, at pitch level it's quite you can sometimes think you've seen something and you haven't. Uh, confirm it and you, there's just a little button you press like it's like a scissors button you click on it and it just goes straight onto your library and your platform um, so then after lunch I could just go back on that and see it and then I'm gonna uh, in a bit I'm gonna push that one out to to some players probably the, the, the midfield and attacking unit that's the thing that was missing in the past and that's the way it's where it's come a long way is because you'd have to do it visually on the training pitch, but then you're losing on, on lads concentration to their load, to their, you stand out on the pitch ages and people switch off. Here, you can do it within instance, clip it all, done, done, done. Within a few minutes, you have the same point you have than you would have going out and doing work in a whole, maybe two, three days to try and get across. You can get that within an instant of 15 minutes. 
And I know for someone technical like the gaffer, that's going to be massive because he needs to get his points across in a team view and how he wants to play very quickly. We use it a lot for unit meetings as well in terms of understanding what gives us success a lot and why things might have gone wrong. So we use it to see whether distances can get a bit big. Um, so that's particularly important for for the, the defensive unit, but in general for everyone, because that's the other thing that we found is that a lot of it is everything's linked. You need to, to create a culture within the group where the players want to be reflective and they, they're not afraid to look at the way in which they play. I think that's fundamental to analysis that the players have to be open and not afraid to critique. And I think we try to create an environment where it's a discussion. You know, when we come in, it's like we discuss the, the game, we discuss uh, how we can improve and the players have to be on board with that. One of our centre forwards, we've, we've basically used our training cameras to, to spot something that would have probably taken us a lot longer to spot if we didn't review our training process, which can only happen with the cameras, with the footage. Um, and we've realised that actually there was a little tweak in his movement inside the box that we thought would bring a lot of benefits to, to him. Uh, and after we spotted it, it became a, a very easy conversation to have because we've then showed him the pictures and it became clear. And then we've showed him a couple of elite examples. I want to show you something afterwards. I watched the training back yesterday and looked at a couple of your movements in the box. Right. And I think it's something that we're going to work with on. I'm going to do, I'm going to clip it mm. today so we can go through it on Friday. Right, great, but yeah. some little things that I think, I think will give you an edge inside the box. Yeah. The manager sort of said to me, and we've watched certain clips of certain players. One was Patrick Bamford we watched and uh, it was sort of the movement from taking the defender away to then attack the space. And well, it's paid off for me. I probably scored about maybe two or three goals from that or from maybe four this season. Ultimately, they're the people that are going to go on the pitch and, and play the game and, and win as football matches. And so that they're, they're the important ones. So it, it wouldn't make sense to have a workflow where we can get to a million conclusions, but then we can't actually pass it on to the players. And very important for us that the players can just open their phone and and just quickly go on the app and they can go to their their groups and open their individual clips or their unit meeting clips or the group ones, the big ones. They can throw comments in to ask me or ask the, the gaffer or ask whoever it might be what they think. Zhao sort of got that across when we first started using the B Pro app, but as it's gone on, everyone's interacted more over it. I mean, the coaches have got really involved in it as well, which I think is good. And I speak to Sam Slocum, the goalkeeper, and Every morning we have a conversation about, oh, did you see that back? Or did you see this, what we could do better? Pretty much after every game, there's always something. I mean, we tend to upload the the games onto the B-Pro system and then we can clip it down. I think it's been very good for, for the set plays where we can have specific set play groups and then put in some of the opposition set plays into that so that the players can access that through the week. And we tend to have a main full team meeting around opposition analysis. But then following that, we can put more specific clips onto the B Pro for the, so if we have a defending group, we can put the opposition attackers on their common movements and trends. So I think it allows us to break break it down and chunk it to the players and give it to them that way. Because as it goes out there. Yeah, stay in your slot. It's a right back. It's only yeah. going to stand on the ball yeah. and pass back inside. He's more dangerous, that guy's more dangerous there. That guy there, get goal side of him. Of course, he's more dangerous. He's more yeah. dangerous as it goes wide out. And then as he goes further down, yeah. Come out. For me, I like to clear my mind before I get there of what the good and the bad traits of a, of a winger is. Once I know that, or even if it's a defender, once I know that, I put it to rest. It's in my mind, it's to rest. So then my whole thought shifts to how is he going to now worry about me? So I analyse quickly as possible, know what I'm going to be dealing against going through Zhao. And that's it. Me, I like to do it earlier, maybe on a lighter day, because I find if you're doing it after a hard session, can you take in and process the amount of information that the B Pro is like anything? If you get a nine to five job and you go all the way to the end of the day and you say, right, now we're going to analyze your day and what, I mean, you just want a cup of tea and you want to sit down next to your wife and just relax for a bit. 
Here it's the same thing. I want to do it where it's going to stay and stay sunk in. He's that tight in the box. It only takes that, that. Yeah, to and then he's gone. That guy nearly just scores. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, definitely. The older I've got, you see the same things, but you just want to know that you're seeing the same things because, and that's why analysis is so important because if you come too safe with it and say, oh, you think you know it all, there'll be a guy that does something completely out of different or new or something random that you don't analyse and then you're getting left behind again or you're, having, you're dropping the team's performance because you haven't looked into it. You want to have things that push your work. So we want to have more things to work on. So um, normally the more advanced you get with the technology, the, the more access to stuff you have, but certainly it makes us more efficient in terms of if you take an overall season and the ability to get all of your messages across and how you want to play, the more information you can get to the players in a short space of time means that you're more efficient with that. It allows us to give stronger, clearer feedback to the players quicker to make our overall process of developing the team much more efficient. Almost everybody spends a lot of time looking at their smartphone. So I guess to be able to have access to all the things that you need and the information around an upcoming game at your fingertips on your smartphone is, is a huge benefit really so that it's so accessible for the players. There's no excuse really for, for not being aware of opposition or your own strengths and weaknesses or your own reflections on the last game. So I think it gives that accessibility and it stops players only being spoon fed, waiting for a big group video analysis or one-to-one. -one. They can take some of the initiative on the analysis themselves and have opinions on it, which is great. It becomes very clear when you've got pictures, basically. And if the players can see them, you can, you can be a lot more certain that they understand exactly what you're trying to put across. The B Pro cameras, they're very important to us in the sense that they help us get the pictures, have a nice platform where you can just store stuff and share stuff with the players as well. So it all just filters into that one platform um, rather than me having it on different folders on my laptop, external USB drives. I don't actually have to man the camera. Uh, so they've installed the cameras there with the, the training ground one's got decent vantage, the stadium definitely really good vantage as well. So that's one of the struggles I used to have before B Pro was to see the stuff that I needed to see while operating the camera. It became very clear that it's, I was either gonna do one or the other well, uh, I ended up analyzing better than filming, if I'm honest. So that's saving me a lot of hours. The storage, the organization, all of these little things, I think it's, from my perspective anyway, because we do pre-match, post-match, uh, training, individual bits. It's very easy to get disorganized and to have clips here and there and everywhere or not rename one or right now I know that all my clips are there and that's that's helpful for me for sure and it definitely makes me more efficient, yeah. When you can see it and you can watch it over again, it's, ma it's a massive help for me anyway. We can literally watch it whenever, um, usually we receive the... Um, the video of our individual clips from maybe the next morning from a game. So I just literally go through the whole of my clips. It might be, it could be 40 minutes, it could be half an hour, but I think it will always help you for any player. If you want to get there and you want to be the best you can every day and be the best for the team, then it's, it's going to be a massive help. I mean, you can watch things and take things on board. Even in the training session today, uh, I spoke with Zhao and he said, oh, you one thing, one movement here, you can do this. You can stay away in pool. Because he, he can then pick if you want to go left or right, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Especially for our, our level at National League as well, I can't imagine many teams um, having the same spec and high spec of analysis. So, um, no, like I say, it's huge for us. And I think throughout the season, it's only got better. And I think the lads have took on board literally week by week. It's, it's improving and you can see it out on the pitch. The evolution now has meant that there's more accessible and affordable quality analysis and the knowledge and input filters down. So as it gets even better at the very top, it filters down. So now we're coming to National League. And I know there's a lot of teams in this league that are very um, resourceful in terms of analysis and it's evolving a lot. And that's only good for the for the game, for the development of the players in the league, um, that, that teams further down the pyramid are able to access really good resources around analysis.
the more you work together with staff, I think not only analysts, but physical staff and uh, medical staff, I think everybody starts to understand how you want the training and you start to connect there. So obviously that you become very close, close knit group and understanding each other, each other's roles and certainly how we want the, the final picture to look is massive. I agree. I think it's such a big operation uh, in, in running a football club uh, that we need to have this understanding and connection and and he puts you at ease, gives you the trust to be independent in what you do. Uh, we can have good, honest discussions. I've got the vantage, so it's good that I'm looking for in, on a match day for this, the stuff that that fits into our game model. So, yeah, it's definitely, again, it's definitely really important to, to, to have that connection. I remember going to, before I went out to Norway, um, I visited around a few clubs and spoke to different managers and a couple of the managers that were working in the Premier League. And one of the things that they said is the, the one of the biggest and most important roles is the relationship with the analysts because they are the ones that are going to be able to give some of the most important feedback to the players on a daily basis. So, you know, that, that role is hugely important within the group. <laughs>